Welcome back. Uh, up for our next talk is Brandon Isles, uh, founder of Ampleforth, uh, going to talk about crypto's third primitive, an uh, asset that behaves a little differently than others. So Brandon, take it away. Hey, yeah, thanks for the intro. Um, so my name is Brandon. I'm a developer with Ampleforth Protocol. Um, I can tell you about the protocol and the unit Ample and how it works. So Ample is a cryptocurrency um, like Bitcoin. Um, and we also call it a financial building block. Um, like Bitcoin, it is uncollateralized, uh, meaning that it has the same um, high scalability that something like Bitcoin does. It's not held back by having to be collateralized, collateralized by any um, outside assets. Um, but unlike Bitcoin, it has an elastic supply policy, meaning that the supply of Ample can adjust every day according to uh, the needs in the marketplace. Um, so this provides a long-term unit of account. And that unit of account um, unlocks more utility for Ample. Um, and we like to describe it as the ability to denominate stable contracts, right? So um, next I'll talk a little bit more about how it works. And then I'll talk more about what we mean by stable contracts. Uh, so the Ampleforth protocol is fairly simple. Um, it has a supply policy that exists uh, purely on chain uh, determined by rules. Um, so every day, what it does is it compares the price of Ample in the marketplace to the price target. Uh, Ample targets the 2019 US dollar, which is roughly $1 today, a little bit more. Um, and each day, if the price of Ample is above the price target, it means uh, that the supply needs to increase. And when the price is below the price target, it means that supply needs to decrease in order to maintain equilibrium. Um, so the way that the supply changes is a little unique, right? So uh, when supply increases, it goes to everyone on the network proportional to what they own. And when supply decreases, it comes from everyone proportional to what they own. So this means that Ample has two qualities together that we've never really seen before in the same asset. So um, one is uh, obviously the, the unit of account, but it's also non-dilutive the same way that Bitcoin is. So in a lot of ways you get sort of the best of what people love about Bitcoin, the, the rules-based monetary policy and the non-dilutive you know, sound nature, but we also get the sort of long run unit of account. Um, the supply policy gets this data um, through, through an Oracle that's integrated with, with Chainlink. Um, and it uses you know, the 24 hour volume weighted average price. So it's, it's very robust in terms of uh, the, the feed of data that it uses to make its um, supply decisions. So uh, here's what we mean by a stable contract. Um, I think this is, this is very important and um, core to the purpose of, of um, making the supply adjustments to begin with. Um, say that Alice were to borrow uh, 10 Bitcoin from Bob um, to be paid back a year later. Um, because it's borrowed in Bitcoin, neither party knows for sure how much that loan liability is going to be worth You know, at the time it's due. Um, so a year from now, that, that 10 Bitcoin, each Bitcoin could be worth you know, 20K, 60K, 30K, right? And so that uncertainty um, can create a lot of unnecessary risk, right? So um, if Alice needs to pay back her loan and suddenly she's on the hook for you know, three times, five times what she thought she would be, um, then that can lead to defaults. And then if Bob was counting on that, uh, income to make good on his liabilities and that could lead to further defaults. Uh, whereas with, with Ample, you get the same non-dilutive nature and you know, decentralized quality of Bitcoin, but you have a very uh, predictable means of understanding what your liabilities are at any time. So if instead Alice were to borrow um, 10 Ample, then she always knows that she's going to be um, on the hook for 10 Ample, um, which is you know 10 uh, 2019 US dollars um, irrespective of what the overall supply change happens in the meantime. So the market cap of Ample could grow drastically or shrink drastically, but the amount of liability that, that Alice has um, stays roughly the same. You know, uh, this, this is the case, you know, so long as Ample fluctuates around the price target of the 2019 US dollar. 
And so uh, for this reason, we, we view Ample as a very uh, important building block for building a safe and resilient financial ecosystem. Um, uh, this is a sort of a unit or primitive that exists very low on the financial stack. And so we, um, we value greatly you know, simplicity, reliability, um, predictability, and transparency. Right? And so we, we've encoded all of those into, into the protocol. And by having you know, safe foundations, then we can reduce risk at all layers of the financial stack. Uh, so you might be asking, you know, this point, uh, this sounds a little bit like a stable coin, um, but if Ample is still, you know, volatile um, and overall valued the same way Bitcoin is, uh, why wouldn't I just use a stable coin instead? And so you can still use a stable coin, right? It just comes with different properties and different trade-offs, right? So um, if you compare Ample to stable coins, there's really two main kinds of stable coins out on the market right now. So there's the dollar collateralized stable coins like uh, Tether or USDC. Uh, these rely on relationships with centralized banks, right? Um, and if, as we're building this decentralized financial ecosystem, you know, as much as possible, we want to build an independent system that's not uh, dependent on any individual actors to, to make the system work, right? And so we want something that's decentralized to be powering decentralized finance. And then there are other decentralized stable coins um, out there that rely on collateral, right? So uh, relying on collateral brings with it scalability challenges in terms of getting enough collateral. If we had to collateralize every single, for example, a dollar in the world, then you know, I, it'd be difficult to, to calculate how much value would be locked up in order to, to support that economic activity. Um, but it also relies on um, external markets, you know, debt markets and lenders of last resort to provide liquidity in times of shortfall or times of crisis. And we've, we've seen this behavior happen in all kinds of markets, even traditional markets. Um, They're normally considered very safe. Um, sometimes they just require um, you know, actions of outside parties to sort of inject liquidity. So Ample can uh, avoid the centralization risk of stable coins and also avoid the, the risk from lenders of last resort. So here's how it works on a single chain. Um, there's only a, a few different um, components. Um, there's the supply policy in the center. Um, the action that rebalances the supply we call rebase and anyone is allowed to call that. It uh, gets data from the Oracle, which medianizes from uh, many different uh, input feeds. Then there's the token itself that uh, is directed by the, the supply policy. And that's what people uh, transact with and make uh, contracts with. So when we were um, designing the system, we made the fairly controversial decision to not build our own blockchain. Um, this has been live since summer of 2019, uh, maintaining its um, uh, you know, relative band around the price target. Um, instead of building our own chain, I think we agreed with a lot of the founders of Polkadot. Um, we were thinking that there's space for many different chains making different trade-offs of, of design within the you know, layer one design space. So we would prefer to be on every chain where people already are, where they're making transactions or storing value or engaging in financial activity. And so as long as the way we think about it, as long as uh, a money is uh, you know, defined by the nature of scarcity and its use value, as long as it shares those and shares liquidity, then it's really the same currency. So if Ample on other chains within Polkadot um, can be transferred back and forth to, to the base chain, and as long as that shares the same scarcity, as long as it is directed by the same supply policy, then it's all the same Ample, no matter where it is located. Uh, so, um, we're really excited to bring Ample into the Polkadot ecosystem to help you know, power the centralized finance stack um, as, as soon as we can. We're working very hard on it. Um, our, our first you know, uh, phrase into the space uh, will be with Akala. So we're really excited to be working with Akala. Um, there'll be a bridge from Ethereum uh, to the Akala ecosystem. Um, and Ample is planned to be used as a first class fee token within the Akala ecosystem that will enable it to power transaction fees. And there will also be seamless transmissions of Ample between the EVM, Colodex, and other primitives. Um, so this should be coming out you know, over the, the course of this year um, in, in line with the development of the ecosystem. And we're really excited to bring this out into the world. Um, uh, it's been live on Ethereum, but I can't wait to see it on other platforms as well. 
Um, yeah, so that's all I had planned. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, I do have some extra slides if there's extra time. Hi. Uh, yeah, thank you for your talk. Um, we do have uh, a question in the chat for you, um, which is, can the rebases come in real time or close to it? So Ample is close to $1 visibility all the time? Mm -hmm. Uh, in theory, it could. There's nothing to stop you from doing that um, technologically. Um, but I think it's based on a faulty market assumption. And, uh, a lot of people assume that there's um, immediate uh, market reaction where we change the supply. Um, this is based on, I think, a misunderstanding around you know the quantity theory of money. If you change the supply, it's not the case that the price adjusts instantaneously. It takes time for the market to, to uh, use that new information um, and incorporate that into into the price. So quantity theory money works over the long term, but not in the short term. So even if you did rebase, for example, on every block or every transaction, it wouldn't necessarily make it more stable. I think it would actually make it more unpredictable. Um, so are, are the main use cases you see for uh, mostly uh, DeFi apps like uh, in chains like Akala, or do you also see end users also uh, trading and using Ample themselves? Um, yeah, so I think uh, the the primary use case in the short term um, will be the combination of uh, traders, you know, trading based off of what they expect future activity will be, but also by powering, you know, decentralized finance infrastructure, borrow lending. Um, financial contracts, especially the longer the contracts exist through time, uh, the more benefit you see from, from using Apple. Um, long term, though, what, will people be using this for day-to-day -day commerce? Um, potentially, you know, we could see it spend longer times within the equilibrium band that would make that easier. But I think more likely people would be using some derivative of Ample in order to, for example, buy their morning coffee if people ever started using cryptocurrencies for that use case. Oh, cool. Okay. There's definitely some uh, questions around the 2019 US dollar target. Uh, is this something that's supposed to be maintained forever? Um, do you see it as having any advantages, disadvantages? Yeah, what that provides is it provides um, a, a stable target value of Ample uh, over time, right? So um, the dollar hasn't seen very much inflation over the last you know, decade or so. That might be changing. You know, if, if we look at you know the latest reports, um, uh, it's hard to know if that will continue or flatten out again. Um, but what this does mean is that we have um, a sort of uh, independent value that Ample represents. Um, and so uh, I think, yeah, that's unlikely to change. You know, if we ever did. Um, adjust our input feed likely to be target some sort of basket of commodities um, if we wanted to untether from any particular measure of inflation. Okay. Um, and just one last question is it's really uh, the comparison of the stable coins back to that like and how is it mostly a protection is ample mostly a protection against these kinds of times of high liquidity where people have you know demand for such coins? Um, I'm not sure I completely understood the question, um, whether it's a, a response to high liquidity. Do you mean inflation there? I, I mean, like regarding the, the rebasing uh, technique versus a typical uh, stable coins mm -hmm. and how they function, um, the advantage of having this rebasing technique directly to accounts. Mm -hmm. um, is that really a protection against just uh, high liquid moments of low liquidity or uh, high volatility, or are there? Is that the main point? Right. So this is in order to have a, a unit of account, you need some sort of um, variable supply. So the question is, how do you vary the supply in order to achieve that goal? Um, with with currencies like like fiat currencies, you know, when new supply gets created, it doesn't go out to the economy instantaneously. It takes a while to um, disperse. Right. Um, and the the, you know, the profits from creating new money is called senior Um in, in Ample, that's um, given 
completely to the network, right? So there's no this non-extraction, non-extractionary. So all the new currency goes directly out um, immediately into the economy. What this does is this um, creates a sort of non-dilutive asset with the unit of account, which makes it you know usable for what you'd want to use it for in, in financial transactions. Oh, cool, makes sense. Well, thank you so much. That's all mm -hmm. the time we have today. And uh, see you soon.